Today, we are here to unveil the blueprint for a safer Philadelphia, the culmination of a six-month process to develop a roadmap to address crime in our city. My name is Anthony Glass, and I'm the Director of Legislation and Policy for Philadelphia City Council Member Curtis Jones, Jr., and I was the staff lead on this project. On September 30th, 2023, Council Member Jones and over 140 stakeholders from every background, government organizations like the Philadelphia City Council, the United States Congress, the Pennsylvania General Assembly, the School District of Philadelphia, the Philadelphia District Attorney's Office, the Philadelphia Law Department, and the Defender Association of Philadelphia, law enforcement like the Philadelphia Police Department and the Sheriff's Office, mental health organizations like Belmont Behavioral Health, the private sector like Jeb's Human Services, the Chamber of Commerce of Greater Philadelphia, the Civic Coalition to Save Lives, and even boots on the ground credible messengers like the House of Emoja, Father's Day Rally Committee, and NOMO. Each of these groups came together at St. Joseph's University to focus not on the problem, but to develop the solution. These stakeholders were aligned with one goal, to make Philadelphia safer. And with that, I am proud to introduce Council Member Curtis Jones, Jr., Majority Leader, the visionary of this project. Yes. <clears throat> I stand here this morning, and I'm a dis Grab the feeling with two words. First word is grateful. I'm grateful to the over 140 stakeholders that participated all day at St. Joe's University to come up with, not become expert articulators of the problem. <laughs> I'll tell you where I got that later. But not to point fingers at each other, but to point fingers at solutions. So the good news today is that the city of Philadelphia is slowly moving in the right direction with a 25% reduction in murders. But for the 388 souls that were lost, not fast enough, not fast enough. So during the debate, Madam 100, mayor of the city of Philadelphia, you on a debate stage said, let's stop being expert articulators of the problem and become architects of the solution. I heard you with my good ear and we began to do that. I want you to know that this document is not the work of that day. This document is the work of work that has come before us, that is a combination President Clark sued the state. President Clark sued so that we could create our own gun laws, like um, lost and stolen and things like that. And we fought the good fight to the degree that we got sued. And we kept coming. Presumptive President next, Kenyatta Johnson and myself, on our, on our day off with President Clark. You know where we went? We didn't go to the shore. We went to a gun show where if you ever saw the movie Jaws, we took a step back and said, we're going to need a bigger boat because that was the most guns we have ever seen in one place. And they were taking them right out into the parking lot, reselling them. And we just understood the gravity of the problem. I want to say that the second word is optimistic. And I'm optimistic because I truly believe that the ingredients to keep this city moving in the right direction are within the city's grasp to have. Member Johnson meets regularly with those agencies, state and federal, that are responsible for gun violence or reducing that gun violence. Right? We, President Clark, along with my members of council, introduced a bill to make sure that we have a chief public safety officer. Why, why is that important? Because all of the ingredients that can be found in this book still needs a good baker to bring them together, to stir the drink, to be able to do what was done in part at CJ to be able to coordinate things like unintended consequences. When there are more arrests, that means more people in prison, that means overcrowding, 
that means probation and parole need to be notified. These things work together. So I am excited about the possibilities. My favorites out of the 140 recommendations are first, let's reduce the school to prison pipeline. We spend so much time pulling these young people out of the river that we have to go upstream to find out why they're jumping in in the first place. Remember, Gaudier, right? So we have to be a kinder, gentler city society that tries to preempt them getting involved in the justice system in the first place. So that's number one. There are 48 zip codes in the city of Philadelphia. In 19 of them, they produce 90 percent of the inmates on state road. Coincidentally, that's where our failing schools are. That's where the high shooter rate at those schools happens. So when we start to look at safe Carter programs that uh, the next police commissioner is doing, that's a vital recommendation that we need to follow up on. Our babies need to be able to get in school, out of school, because the some of the fights that start in the hallway wind up spilling out on our streets. We have to be ready for that. The next thing that I want to do, I played you like a lot of your stuff, is we need more boots on the ground police officers. Those officers should be culturally competent. So if you don't know what whips, chips, and kicks are, you need to go back to school. Because he know, or you know exactly, you know, right? what all of those things are. Whips are cars, chips is money, kicks is sneakers. But if you don't know that, you could be standing in a crowd, as we often do with the district attorney and G. Lamar Stewart, and we're hearing what's going on. If you don't understand the language, you're clueless. We need to, and one of my favorites, is to build that new crime lab. You can't reduce the court convict or, or increase the conviction rate without evidence. So there was a 20 year murder solved the other day due to DNA that was done through science. We need that kind of connectivity to, to help solve crimes. So I say to you, that there are things in this document. It is not a perfect document, but it's a damn good start. And it is not a finished document. There should be volume two, volume three, update four, inclusion six, that we need to, need to have. We found out that technology is important in this crime summit. We had a drone demonstration right here, right? And it scared the hell out of me. But that's the way of the future. And we realize we have far too few drones. In LA, Madam Mayor, they have drones at the shopping centers making sure that the groups of people rushing these uh, facilities, Macy's of the world, mm -hmm. they can see coming. We, we have to keep up technologically with what's going down. So we, we want to do that. We want to do this and more. Um, we think this is a good start. Um, I'm proud of the collaboration. My president talks about this. We took off, I won't, I won't steal your stuff. That's story stealing. I'm going to leave it to you. <laughs> but, but we learned a lot in our travels. And this is a combination of this book. So with that, I'm going to turn over to Mike to the next mayor. No, I'm gonna present it first of all. Look, get the shot. <laughs> I love it. I love it. So a lot of these things I actually learned from you. I learned from my colleagues in this room. One of your recommendations is in there about learning how to do conflict resolution in schools. 
and I ain't plagiarized, I actually give credit to where credit is due. But a lot of this stuff I learned from my colleagues and my president, and I'm thankful for that. And with that, the next mayor of the city of Philadelphia, Sherelle Parker. Thank you. Um, let, me, let me start uh, by saying to uh, Council President uh, Clark, uh, soon to be uh, President uh, Johnson, uh, members Gilmore Richardson um, and Gaultier, um, the few people aren't here today. Um, our Appropriations Chairman in the Senate, Vin Vincent Hughes, Speaker McClinton, Appropriations Chairman Harris, super proud that our Philadelphia Delegation Chairwoman uh, Morgan Cephas uh, is here. Um, our uh, District Attorney, uh, Larry Krasner, um, along with uh, G. Lamar uh, Stewart, who's been more than an uh, able uh, body uh, advocate on behalf of the District Attorney's Office. Um, this is what intergovernmental cooperation and planning looks like. Um, I remember, Councilmember Jones, when that meeting occurred at St. Joe's, and thank you, St. Joe's, uh, for hosting. I was still on the campaign trail, traveling to neighborhoods across the city, never changing the message based on the race, class, socioeconomic status, zip code, religion, or any other measure that has been used in the past to divide us with the message that said, if you would give me the opportunity, I would work in an intergovernmental collaborative way to make Philadelphia the safest, cleanest, greenest big city in the nation with access to economic opportunity for all. And the day that you had the event, I couldn't be there. So my brain trust, Sincere Harris and Aaron Platt, they were in the audience and um, they were giving me updates in the middle of the meeting. And I remember thinking, wow, I'm so accustomed, and, and, and you know this from Peace Not Guns, I, I am so accustomed to seeing people get into a room and do what you described, demonstrate what experts they are in articulating the problems associated with public safety in the city of Philadelphia, but never proffering solutions that we, in an intergovernmental collaborative way, can employ the use of to make our city safer. On today, I get the opportunity to say to you, uh, Council Member Jones, thank you so very much for your leadership. This is what the work looks like. So on today, it's the blueprint for a safer Philadelphia, concrete, um, very methodically uh, put together, proposed recommendations that the Parker administration, and from a public safety perspective, uh, our soon-to-be police commissioner, Kevin Bethel, as we're working on plans to, to implement, we know we can use this to develop what we're going to refer to as our action plan. Uh, right, that we will employ the use of. Um, so we get this today. We also got a report from Council Member Driscoll in this Joint Task Force on Regulatory Reform about uh, reforms to the Department of Licenses and Inspections. So, Mr. President, soon to be Mr. President, Mr. President, and all of the leaders, this is what we need because these are actionable items. Um, and Philadelphians, they don't want us to get together in a room and meet. Council, Council, Council President uh, Johnson and I were just having a sidebar a few seconds ago talking about some very measurable ways, right, that we are going to have to say to the people of the city of Philadelphia as a result of this budget process, this is what we know uh, will happen. And they should be able to see it, touch it, and feel it where, where, they, lead, where, they, where they live. So thank you uh, for your leadership. I want you to know, and I said this to uh, Council President uh, Johnson, we are not finished trying to put together the team because for every recommendation that, that you've given us, we have to have a team of the best and the brightest people, some who are in this room today who are going to help us implement the recommendations that are here. But I want you to know it's not an I thing. It's a team thing. It's a we thing. I can't do it alone. I'm not superwoman. This right here, this is representative of one Philly a united city. Thank you all.
Our next speaker will be Council President Darrell Clark. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you. Um, so, during the past several years, maybe decade, um, we in Council, we've been answering questions and we've been listening, we've had public hearings, we've been out in neighborhoods, and we've heard the many, many problems that we face in our communities. Um, bottom line is there have been some significant challenges and we have to all acknowledge it and we have to admit it. Um, so in council, um, we actually are a council that does go beyond the walls and beyond this chamber. And we decided to make some trips as uh, uh, Majority Leader Jones was just referencing. And the bottom line, we actually went as far as Chicago um, to look at some of the technology that they were using, um, space age kind of stuff, right? And we said, well, let's go a little closer to home because we want to get a perspective about what the local um, geographics and the demographics of, of our particular city is. And we walked the streets of Trenton with the mayor because we heard that over a period of the summer for 90 days, they did not have a homicide in the middle of the summer. Uh, we went to Chester, and we saw how Chester came down in record time numbers as it related to homicides. Uh, we went all around in various cities and municipalities. We went to Trenton, we met with the mayor over there to look at what they had with shot spotter and all the other technology. And we came back with one, one, one reservation, and it wasn't necessarily the things that I referenced, the technology, it wasn't necessarily the things that I referenced, the location, the demographics of the area. We, re we realized that this right here is what they had in every municipality that we had that had success, right? Everybody, everybody, whether constitutionally, by mandate of election, by mandate of appointment, you had some level of responsibility for bringing down gun violence and homicides and all the other crimes associated with those particular neighborhoods. And they work together. You know, so Councilman Jones, um, I'm a little, you know, my council, I'm a council person, right? But I'm gonna talk about recognizing my friends. Councilwoman Bass, Gilmore Richardson, Gaudier, Johnson, soon to be. Can't wait to hand that <laughs> gavel over to you, my friend. Majority Leader Jones, thank you so much, you all, for working and putting this blueprint in place to a document so we can have something to work with. And please, Let's not have this press conference and then we kind of all go our separate ways, right? This should be consistent. You know, we have to work together and there should actually be an attendance sheet taken every time to make sure everybody continues to participate in this process. Scorecard, right, Councilman Johnson? So guys, this is awesome. Let's rock it. Let's get it done because the citizens of the city of Philadelphia expect us and require us to do just this. Bring these numbers down. Thank you. Our next speaker will be District Attorney Larry Krasner. Thank you. <clears throat> uh, you know, I do, I do want to take this opportunity to once again thank Council President for his service. And I got some news. If they're taking attendance where everybody's going to get together to work on this, I ain't skipping. I will, I will be there the whole time. I think that is actually what is perhaps most important about today. But I want to start out by acknowledging all of these wonderful allies that we have up here in council, in the state house, in the community. I want to, want to acknowledge all of the good work that gets done sometimes publicly and sometimes behind the scenes with people who are up here. And I also want to say I don't really see this as a 1.0, I see this as a 2.0. 1.0 was the 100 shooter report which was done by Council Member Jones and incoming Council President Kenyatta Johnson. Um, it, it was a really important opportunity for people to be heard, for what they had to say to be public, for it to be recorded, and for us to identify the very, very large areas of agreement and a few areas of disagreement so that we can work on them together. I don't think there's anything more important than that work. And if you actually look at the dramatic drops that we have seen in homicides, I mean, let's be real about this. this we are still in a tragic situation. We hit 400 homicides today. But we are looking at 102 fewer homicides than last year. 
something like 130 fewer homicides than the year before. We are looking at the largest reduction in homicides that I can see in at least the last 15 years in the city of Philadelphia, and it's even, it's even faster than the national average by far. Similar amazing outcomes with shooting incidents down almost 27%, with shooting victims, uh, I'm sorry, 23%, shooting victims down almost 27%. There are some positive things happening in this tragic and difficult moment, but what we need to do is to be encouraged by that to work even harder, to work together even more, to be open to changes in our own positions, and to be open to positive solutions. I think this is a 2.0. I think the 1.0 is attached to the back of it, and I'm really looking forward to everything that we can do together to get to 3.0. Let me finally just say this. We have to not just bring the numbers down. We have to align people's understanding and their perceptions with the numbers. We are not doing this city any good when it has seen tremendous progress in the middle of a tragedy of all we do is say something false, which is that it's getting worse every day. We need to celebrate the victories. We need to work harder to have more of them. And we need to make sure that the public is fully informed about two truths, the one truth which is that we are still dealing with a tragedy, but the other truth, which is that we are making real progress and working together with community, working together with each other, we will continue to do that. There's certainly a number of individual things I could point to here that I think are sharp, I think are smart, I think are important. I actually had difficulty going through this, finding much to disagree with. I think I, I probably agreed with 137 out of 140 of these things. But, but I will say this finally, I am so encouraged when I hear people saying, yes, we need that crime lab that we have all been talking about now for many years, I am so encouraged when I hear from the public, yeah, you need that crime lab because when you busted Elias Diaz a couple days ago for multiple rapes, a strangulation murder, and slashing two people, that was the consequence of science that didn't exist back when he committed these crimes. When I hear people talking about more wiretaps so we can do deep dive investigations and get the people running the show, not just the people who work for them, that is so encouraging to me. Ultimately, this is gonna be about what we have all discussed, which is investment, deep investment in prevention, and deep investment in modern enforcement, and deep investment in community, because community is where you really make a whole lot of the progress. Uh, I am so encouraged by this, and I am so grateful for everything that has been done by Council Member Jones and all of his colleagues and all of the allies who are up here and I'm committed to supporting it every way I can. Thank you very much. Our next speaker will be State Senator Sharif Street. Well, one, I want to um, thank everybody who's been gathered here. Um, if this is a uh, a harbinger for what Philadelphia can expect going forward. Uh, I think we're, we're moving in the right direction. I want to echo a lot of what I heard our district attorney say. Um, uh, this plan makes a lot of sense. Uh, I wanted to thank Councilman Jones for his leadership uh, in pulling this together. I understand this is the first real uh, crime sum municipal crime summit of its, of its type since my father left office. Um, and I, I want to also look at uh, call out the fact that it, do, it does both and it shows that we can do both in terms of uh, looking at effective crime fighting strategies while also talking about the need to address the social determinants of crime and violence. Um, we know that vi crime and violence are highly, more highly correlated with poverty uh, than they are anything else. But that, just because we say that does not mean that we don't understand that things like a crime lab, things like a community policing, Thing, that there isn't a need for law enforcement and effective law enforcement to be used in a strategic uh, way. Uh, so I am uh, glad we have folks here want us to know that I will do everything I can to ensure that the Commonwealth does its part. Um, at a minimum, we need to provide funding for a number of the, these initiatives. Um, but I just want to say I'm so encouraged uh, that we're pulling together uh, and that we're addressing what is the number one concern for so many Philadelphians, which is being able to get up in the morning and go about your day in a safe way. Uh, for parents not to have to worry about children going to school without getting injured. Uh, for senior citizens knowing that they can get their medicine, get their groceries and wor without worrying about being hurt. Um, and for all of us 
to be able to live our lives and take for granted safety, something that people in so many communities um, outside of the cities are able to do. That should be something that all of us can do, uh, and I think this is a significant step uh, in the right direction. Thank you so much. Our next speaker will be State Representative Morgan Cephas. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, first, I just really want to thank Majority Leader Jones. Um, right before this press conference at 9 o'clock, I was actually on a phone call, a conference call, with uh, our Lieutenant Governor and the Secretary of Legislative Affairs with the Philadelphia delegation. And we talked about the upcoming budget season. And one of our top priorities, as you can imagine, is public safety in the city of Philadelphia. And they asked us one question. Does Philly have a plan? And luckily, I was able to talk about a press conference that I was going to at 10 a.m. and talk about the plan that we have to deal with public safety in the city of Philadelphia. So thank you for making this very timely. <laughs> so I talked about, you know, not just articulating the problem, because that's oftentimes what, you know, we only have an opportunity to do when we're in the minority up in Harrisburg. I was able to actually talk about the solution and talk to them about being intentional, not just about legislation, not just about policy, but being intentional about where you spend your dollars to address the lack of investment that we have seen for decades and decades that contributes to the type of crime that we are experiencing. And the reason why this plan is great, because we know we're not going to just simply be able to rest our way out of the problem. And we have to make strategic investments to ensure we continue going in the right direction. So strategic investments that we had an opportunity to talk about with our Lieutenant Governor was smart policing, investing in technology. You all think I don't listen to you every Thursday in City Council, trust me I do, because we plagiarize a lot of stuff up in Harrisburg. <laughs> But investing in the technology, including, you know, drones and shot spotter and investing in the forensic lab and, and the data lab. But we also must invest in communities, um, not just anti-violence organizations, but in our rec centers, our green spaces, our school buildings, our facilities. And we also have to invest in people. We have to ensure that people have access to economic opportunities so they can't just uh, be alive, but that they can thrive in the city of Philadelphia. And we know we've been doing that already from a local, state, and federal level. And I would like to say that, you know, while we contribute, you know, the decrease in homicides and other violent crimes across the city of Philadelphia is because we made those investments. But we also understand that every statistic, behind every statistic, there is a victim, there's a family, there's a community, and there are still people that don't feel safe in our neighborhoods. So we still have a lot of work to do. And again, I say this is a very timely report um, and very timely with the leadership in the city of Philadelphia because we have a Democratic majority in the House for the very first time in 10 years. And with that majority, we have a speaker from the city of Philadelphia in Joanna McClinton. We have an appropriations chair from Philadelphia in Jordan Harris. So again, this is very timely because we can make significant investments to go in, to continue to keep going in the right direction. When I talk about investments, I want to talk about investments like we've made with $40 million we delivered in this budget for anti-violence organizations. And it also included $100 million for mental health services for our students, the $25 million that we delivered for the forensic lab. And for the very first time, we've seen gun law legislation move out of the House of Representatives, and we have never seen that. So we are moving in the right direction in Harrisburg. We are rolling up our sleeves to, and are ready to do the work. And trust me, I can say that we will be in attendance uh, for every meeting and for every conversation, again, so we can get this right here for our communities and generations to come. So thank you again, Majority Leader, for having me be a part of this conversation and for having the Philadelphia delegation, again, roll up their sleeves with us here in the city of Philadelphia. Thank you. Our next speaker will be our next council president, Kenyatta Johnson. I just want to take a moment to ask everyone, let's give Majority Leader Councilman Curtis Jones, give him a real big round of applause first and foremost. Since 2000, um, 
9-11, when I first became a council person, he took the helm of the Public Safety Committee. And from that time, we really made public safety the number one priority on the agenda of the administration here in the city of Philadelphia. So I want to thank you for your laser-like focus. But also, I, wanna, I don't want to say bring my partner in crime. Can I say partner in crime? But partner for good in addressing uh, this issue. Good trouble, that is. And most importantly, making sure that the people here in the city of Philadelphia know that we have a comprehensive plan in addressing the issue of public safety. And I would be remiss if I didn't talk about while this presentation was taking place. I'm sitting here thinking about my son, Isaiah Mandela, who's nine years old, and Elijah Kwame, who's seven years old. And how me and my wife had a conversation the other evening, and part of that conversation is, will we allow him to catch the bus to go to another school? How you doing, Dr. Wallace, school no, superintendent, you. right? And to be honest, right, I pause for a moment because I'm not at that point right now where I'm gonna let my son get on a school bus around the issue of public safety. If that means I have to get up an hour or two early before I come into the chamber and start my work to drop them off, that's what I'm going to do. But I'm committed to work in partnership with my colleagues who are here in city council, and most importantly, the next mayor here in the city of Philadelphia to make sure that this document becomes a living and breathing document and that those recommendations come in reality for the citizens here in the city of Philadelphia. So to Councilman Curtis Jones, I want to thank you for your leadership. I look forward to continuously moving the city of Philadelphia forward around the issue of public safety with you. Thank you very much. Before I recognize our next speaker, I would like to note that we are in the presence of Council Member Mark Squilla, Council Member Cindy Bass, uh, Police Commissioner John Stanford, and Superintendent, Superintendent uh, Dr. Tony Wallington. And our next speaker will be Shante Love from Amir Healing Center. Yeah. Thank you, thank you, Councilman Jones. Thank you for allowing us to have this space. What you're seeing here is something that you should see all the time. And what you're seeing is the numbers are driving down because you have a united team. Community, we've always worked together, but the, co but the collective of government, community, education, Law enforcement working just as one unit is what you're about to see. You're about to see something that people are going to be writing in the books for. And what I want to say is that being the co-founder of Emir Healing Center, Every Murder is Real, the devastation and the pain that we see every day will always be imprinted in my DNA. That's how I live and breathe, unfortunately, until we put me out of business, that the loss of a loved one, when we say we're down to 100, you down to 400, you need to add 100 people to each person. That's the magnitude of what we're doing. But what you saw that happened at the summit is that the trauma that has been impacted in our city, neighborhood through neighborhood, is real. And that the community convening the providers that are not only medical, but also the providers that's doing non-traditional healing, also culturally com competent folks, people that experience with live experiences, come up with solutions that are real. And what you see is hope. We are one city. We are united. The, the country's going to be watching and watching and watching and saying, how did they do it? I want you to remember the ideas of people's success outside the city originated here. We have always been the beacon in the innovative places. We will heal a community, we will heal a city, we will heal a family, but we will most importantly invest in it, in the human spirit, that mental health and trauma support has to be across the board, that community has to be able to feel it, touch it, see it, and know what trauma looks like when we didn't get it right. And because we've been, been this victim so long that when we transition and invest in our communities, we're not talking about being a victim, but also being a survivor and then moving to recovery and then it no longer exists. That's what we're talking about. 
And so you'll see us walking and marching together, but you'll see us collectively working together to make a powerful bang. Because guess what? I cannot live and say there was once a black man and that in the history books that they no longer exist. I want, I want to go on the porch and have my neighbors holler across to me. I want to send the neighborhood kid to the corner store to get me a gallon of wool, uh, milk. I want to be able to go to the rec center and let, let them laugh at me as I try to jump a hula hoop again and jump rope. I wanted, we want people to have the basic things of life so that they can dream and live and thrive. So this summit and us all coming together, this is, this, this is the norm for Philadelphia now. This is what we do, and we do it united. I want to thank you all as we, as we change a city, but I want you all to take note. You're going to see something amazing happen. And I hope that you get along the ride, because guess what? You will be able to say, we saved the race of people. Our final speaker today, and for, uh, as a note, all of our stakeholders are listed uh, within the blueprint document. Our final speaker will be our next police commissioner, Kevin Bethel. So I'm a little under the weather, so if you don't see me as, as energized as Ms. Love, you forgive me, um, but, but I do want to thank uh, Councilman Jones for, for the work he put in. I, I had the opportunity to participate in, in the forum that day, and I think Mayor Parker laid it out very well. I've been to many meetings where we meet to meet, to meet again, to meet again, and nothing ever comes out of it. And so it is very exciting to see that this report uh, has come out and particularly when I look at what Mayor Parker and when she put forth her safety plan I started to look through now. This is a It's a lot of pages here my friend So uh, 68 pages and I'm going through it But I also started to see the correlations between the plans and how we'll be able to embed that work as I put forth our strategy for the city But I also believe in remiss if we don't take an opportunity to highlight the things Actually in the report, you know, uh, Dr. Wallington is here and, and when we talk about so you start to look at Dr. Wallinson's Accelerate Philadelphia and, and, and the strategic plan, you say, well, wait a minute, when I look at the safety things in his plan, it aligns with the safety things in this plan. And we talk about corridors most recently through the investments within the school district and the state and, and dollars that we invested. Since that time, we've been able to move to 23 corridors across the city. And so I'm excited about the conversation because in Dr. Wattles' report, he talks about looking for additional dollars and additional support to make sure we can expand those. When we talk about the school to prison pipeline, I think you know, I also want to make sure we give credit to the Philadelphia Police Department. I, we started that work in 2014, but we also have to understand in 2014, 1,600 kids were being arrested in the school district of Philadelphia. Last year it was 147, so there's been a 91% reduction. <laughs> you know, and, and, and so many of the colleagues, uh, many of the individuals up here were a part of that. And so, but it also highlights in the report, there's more work to be done. Right, but Dr. Wallington has been very steadfast in appreciating and continuing that work. So, so we have a lot of work to do. So I'll, I'll switch out of my hat of the school district and as I move into the police commissioner role, this is the work, right? You heard the mayor say it about an action plan. Like the, about the work is about hope, about giving hope to this city that we can get the work done. And so when I look at this report, it's a heavy assignment. But I take everything out of why? Because you know, constantly you hear Mayor Parker say, "Every voice matters." I'll stay there. Every voice matters. What I liked about the report, I sat through the whole thing. I think anybody who said something in that day got in the report. No one could walk away from that day and say my voice was not heard. That's why it's so long. Like normally, we condense it all down. We make it look sick and pretty, and everybody can read the executive summary and keep going. But in this report, everyone in that room's voice was in that report. And that's exciting for me because that's what the work is. I sat in the hall not too long ago and I said, the power in policing comes from the community. And when the, if the community raises their voice and tells us what we want, it's our responsibility to do it. And so when I looked at this 68-page assignment that he, the team just gave me, um, it's aspirational. Uh, but it is what we should be as an organization, what we should be as an entity, working together 
to make this city a safe city. So I appreciate all the effort and work that's been put into this process. I look forward to taking on my new charge to lead this effort. And, and collectively, together, we can make this city what? Safe the safest? No, what's my, what? Yeah, just, that's safest, greenest, cleanest city in America, right? Thank you, everyone. Our next speaker will be Superintendent Dr. Tony Watlington. Uh, thank you. Good morning. Uh, when Majority Leader Jones tells you to do something, you step up to the podium and you do it. So uh, 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 President Clark, uh, President Leck, Johnson, uh, Leader Jones, all the legislators who are here today, uh, I really want to just piggyback on what Chief Kevin Bethel said, soon to be Commissioner Bethel just said about Accelerate Philly and how we in the school district are looking forward to be partners with this plan. Uh, President Clark, President Johnson, uh, we are accelerating Philly. I just want to say very quickly that we're on the right track. Got a lot of work to do as uh, Kevin Bethel said, but uh, last school year, uh, luckily, we made it, and uh, strategically, we made progress in 13 out of 17 tested areas in the school district. Uh, the number of students who dropped out of school was reduced by 265, and the four-year cohort graduation rate increased by three percentage points from 71 to 74 percent. We've got a lot of work to do. Thank you. Kudos to the team. Finally, I just want you to know that the percentage of our children who attended school 90 percent of the year increased by three percentage points last year, and the percent of our teachers who attended school 90% of the year increased by seven percentage points. So, President Johnson, we are elect, we are looking forward to being a part of the mayor-elect's vision of the safest, cleanest, greenest city, and we're gonna do our parts in the public school district to make sure that we're supporting the work of council, and we thank you so much for all your work to all our legislators. Thank you so much. I'm not gonna to take too much time. I know we're like the last of the last of the last speakers, but um, collaborative work, I, just in my short time in the role as interim commissioner, I have spoken to everybody that's, that's on this platform in some form or fashion, either directly or indirectly, of trying to come together to get work done. And I think we've already started to see some of the, of, of the uh, results of that just in this year, of seeing some of our, our you know, crime numbers drop across the city and seeing some success in that. And so as we move forward, into a new administration, into a new police commissioner. Um, I think that work is gonna continue. People have asked, well, what's the difference? And I say the mission is the same. And the mission is to make this city safe uh, for everybody. And so we're gonna continue that, but having this collaborative work, having everybody be a part of that on the same page, we're not gonna always agree on everything, and that's okay. But, but coming to the table to sit down and talk about the things that we do agree on and working on the areas that we don't to just move things forward is what we've started. And, and I can, you know, very confident and, and happy to see that that's where we're going as a city. And so thank you very much for everybody to work on this stage. I think I am the final, uh, the final speaker. Joe Kender, um, Senior Vice President of St. Joseph's University. And we are so proud to have participated in this summit and continuing to participate on the, in the ongoing dialogue. Uh, this is such an important issue, not only by hosting the event, but really by having our students take notes, which really provided the foundation for this document. I want to take a quick minute just to echo what's been said so eloquently by others before me. Um, but every citizen in this city has a right to be safe and to feel safe, a right to be safe and feel safe. And it is our hope that this document becomes a launching pad right, for an ongoing dialogue, which is what we're hearing here. Right? We have a lot of work ahead of us. You know, early uh, in the mayoral uh, election, we hosted, I think it was the second mayoral debate, and the topic happened to be crime and safety. And Mayor-elect Parker stood, up, stood out that, that evening for not only having the courage to say what needed to be said, but, for, but by providing the optimism and hope that we look for in a leader and we stand ready to work with her, with city council, and moving forward on this important issue and so many others. I wanna close by thanking council members Curtis Jones for your leadership and for your support on so many issues. You always show up for us and we really appreciate it. Thank you. Questions, solutions, Answers, we'll take them.
Absolutely. So we've taken several trips. I'm not going to say where it is, but in the city of Philadelphia is a crime lab. Mm -hmm. And from floor to ceiling, I've never seen that many guns confiscated in my life. There's another floor where you can go in where you can probably get a contact because I've never seen that much marijuana, heroin, and fentanyl in my life. But sadly, there's another portion where rape kits don't get processed, where technicians have to be in a space that is probably illegal, too small for the union contract. So what we've agreed to do, because we are producing some of the best forensic scientists in the nation, is to invest in that and by being able to reduce some of that time, ballistics, rape kits, and others, we'll be able to get people justice when they're innocent and convictions when they're guilty. Sure. I just wanted to add that the city is currently considering proposals for um, a new forensics lab. There are actually three final proposals, one of which might be in the third district. Uh, okay. She slid it in. <laughs> she slid it in. That's all right. Yes, I think we have 25, 25 million from the state and 50 from the, yeah, 50 from the 12. That's 10 in this final drop check. 50 million from the city, 25 from the state. For new land. So in our formatting, thanks to St. Joe's University and the young people and professors that were in it, we codified everything in problem, solution, and next step. Some of those next steps are as simple as um, working with credible messengers. Some of them cost, and some of them have a price tag. And we have to be able to step up to the plate to do that. Under the 57 block proposal, they're saying that uh, in their general suggestion is that we have to invest in neighborhoods that have been disinvested in. So if, uh, I think it was Reverend Holston pointed out a block in my, unfortunately, in my district where government spends $1 million on one block to incarcerate pro on parole and all of those factors, we can invest our way out of that by maybe one-tenth of that investment, we should do that. And so we're looking at how things actually cost. Unfortunately, we don't know what a, co a murder cost us. I've asked the uh, city controller to create a metric that says from the time that kid pulls that trigger to the time the police arrest them to the social workers that come see them, the DA that has to uh, in, uh, interrogate or investigate, to the defender, to the person at the jail that serves them food, that buys, how much does that cost? And if we can find close to that number, then we can say, let's invest, how much does community college cost a year? How much does a year round, one of the suggestions, I think it's like 5,000 kids that are actually the problem. And if we got half of them to do what is in here called a promise, that if you go to school and you don't commit a crime, and if you don't get caught out on curfew, and if you get a C average, we promise you a year-round job. We promise you five out four outcomes when you graduate from school. You'll either be in a trade school, be in a college, be in a, in a wage-supporting job, or be in the military. We can do those things. And, we, and guess what? What was scary is the money actually exists. Money is all, it's always there. We just got, I learned that from Clark. He said, he said to me, that sounds good, but how much does doing good cost? We ought to be able to always answer that question.
No, it's a recommendation to the controller's office because I think they're best capable to create that matrix. Um, look, in the way of some specific funding things, uh, obviously each thing has its own idea, but I think Representative Cephas alluded to this. Um, there are specifics, at least uh, that we know that the Commonwealth needs to contribute. Uh, we've proposed, Senate Democrats have proposed, House Democrats have endorsed a plan to put $50 million at the towards safe car doors. Um, obviously, it has to get through the budget process, and, and we are in discussions with the governor's office about that. Uh, we contributed $25 million towards the crime lab, the city $50 million. We, I think GVI was another $20 million. Um, there are specific numbers for it. I mean, to go through an enumeration of everything um, that, it, that you know, it would, would take a while, but there are specific numbers to what things cost. Um, one of the other ways you fund some of this is uh, through justice reinvestment. Um, when we do things like safe, uh, <coughs> like advancing um, clean slate, there's savings to the justice system and, and JRI uh, allows us to take that mo those savings and reinvest it in crime prevention programs. And I think we looked at another $185 million annually in funding uh, law enforcement related things. And so direct costs like district attorney police and things of that nature. Of course, those are statewide numbers. We'd have to break out what the city's allocation are. Thank you, Senator. Thank you. I like that. So we aren't killing any more trees in my district anyway. Yeah, we have done enough. So I have the president, future president of council here. I have the Philadelphia uh, House delegation. I have the uh, Senate delegation. We're all on one fill. And we're beginning to talk. We're beginning to talk before budgets get passed so that we can, uh, uh, President Clark wore out shoe leather up in Harrisburg often. But what I think he inspired was us to begin to talk like other cities did. We, we were able to see what the ingredients were to be successful when you have a 90 day rest in murders. Well, that was because everybody could manage to be in a room for more than a half hour figuring out the problem, not protecting their silo. So I can assure you that when I first started, I remember crime, I used to say this, and I will never again say this, this is the last time you're gonna hear it. If 300 whales washed up on the shore of Delaware, every marine biologist, including Jacques Cousteau's ghost, would be trying to figure it out. 400 kids died, 400 people lost their lives in Philly, and this is the first time 140 stakeholders ranging from the Chamber of Commerce to boots on the ground ever got together and nobody got in a fight. I, I told the sheriff, I said, you know, you're here uh, because of your input and your understanding in both police and the sheriff's office about what crime means, but you're also here to break up fights if people start disagreeing and it never happened. Something magical actually happened. And I'm listening to young people talk to old heads saying, yeah, I hear what you're saying, but let me tell you my reality. I live in an abandoned house. I get up every morning and my new uniform is a white tee from the corner store. And I put my nine in my back of my pocket. And I, in my world, I don't know if I'm gonna live another five years. That's their reality. There are other zip codes where my father's a doctor and my mother's an accountant. I know after I get through my silliness, I got a life. We have to create that vision for some of our, our at-risk young people. Come on.
So you're right, but guess what? It was a seed that took time to germinate. I remember my colleague right here challenging us to elevate this issue. Do you remember? Wasn't that true? And it took a while for all of us to figure out that, yeah, we can worry about global warming, but we won't even make it that far if these kids don't start stop killing each other. It doesn't matter whether you want to build a stadium on Market Street, you got to figure out how to keep 200 kids from ransacking Market Street. So we realized over time, and this is the beauty of it, that the Chamber of Commerce knows that if they don't get involved, south of uh, Broad Street is doomed. Yeah, you don't have to wait for a table <laughs> at uh, McCormick and Smith much now. Because people had voted with their feet to go to uh, just uh, to, uh, what is that, uh, Ballot Kenwood and up in, uh, what is King it, of King of Prussia, there you go. And they know they're eating our lunch. So it's in all of our interests. Macy's, their lease is up next year. We have to get together and the sense of urgency is upon us. Only one more question? Yes, folks. <laughs> Last question. Um, so, in my opinion, it'll be on the next mayor and the next council to figure out how to prioritize which ones. Some things are right now, not, not now, but right now. Like we have to figure out what's going on at JJC, right? We're, we're creating a bed of misery that creates future felons. We have to realize right now that the kids we see at DHS are will the defendant please, please rise as adults. But we have to prioritize these asks and um, as, as my president says, it's okay to do good, but how much does doing good cost? And we're gonna have to figure it out. Thank you all.